Welcome to this HCTL training video on psychometric analysis, which is usually applied to multiple choice exams. Please be aware that you can also do a qualitative analysis and you can find materials and input on that type of analysis on the BKE Brightspace environment or on theme testing. The name psychometric analysis makes it sound quite complicated, but in the course of this video, you'll find out that it's actually quite easy. An analysis can yield some amazing insights into your test that you wouldn't otherwise see just on the face of it, and will give your students a reliable and fair assessment. It's a simple way to get some real insights. So let's delve into the world of psychometric analysis by looking at p-value, rear value, and Cronbox alpha. In Remindo, you will automatically receive multiple choice test results and an analysis like this. By the end of the video, you'll understand three of the elements in this overview. This is a simplified results list for a test. On the left are six students' names and at the top, seven questions. In the right column, you see the total scores of the students. At the bottom is a row containing the percentage of students who got the question right. Okay, just pause this video for a moment, if you like, to look over the various results and get a feel for this overview. What stands out to you? If we look at the students' results, we see that Anna and Emerson got the highest scores. Bilal, Chris, and Denisha score much lower. And Finn scores a 60%. Okay, at this point, it's interesting to see which percentage of your students passed and failed overall. But this isn't an analysis. For the analysis, we're delving a little deeper into the test. Take a look now at the bottom row. You'll see on the bottom left that it says p-value. And the bottom row shows you percentages. This is the difficulty index. The difficulty index indicates the percentage of students that answered this question correctly. All right, let's take a moment to have a look at this difficulty index and see what you notice here. If you like, pause the video and take a moment to study the overview you'll notice that question two was answered incorrectly by all students. Questions three and four, on the other hand, were answered correctly by all students. This gives question two, question three, and questions four p-values of 0% and 100%. Questions five, six, and seven seem to have more evened out results uh, in that some students got the answers right and others not. Only a few students answered question one correctly. So the p-value tells us the difficulty of the question, but without context, this information isn't always useful. Your intention for these questions is important and also your teaching comes into play. For example, you may want to start your test with an easy question, which will have a high p-value, and put the more challenging questions later on. P-values may also tell you something about the quality of your teaching or the needs of your learners. Okay, so far, the p-value. Let's move on and take a look at the rear value, or the discriminatory index. Take a look at questions one, three, and four. Pause the video here, if you like, and study the overview. Chris and Denisha scored low on the test, but they did get number one correct. 
Anna and Emerson, on the other hand, scored high overall on the test, but got question number one wrong. This tells us that question number one does not correctly discriminate between proficient and less proficient students within the context of this test. You'll probably understand at this point that a rear value can only be calculated reliably if there is a large number of students and a large number of questions because it is based on the relationship between scores. So what score should you be looking out for? A negative rear value means that the proficient students got this question wrong and the non-proficient students got it right. Something is definitely wrong if you see a negative rear value. These questions always need attention. Good to know, a rear value over 0.15 is mediocre and at 0.35 or higher, you'll have a good score. Now, what about the relationship between p-value and rear? Consider this. If a question has a 100% p-value, what sort of rear value might that generate? The answer is a low score, because there's no differentiation between proficient and non-proficient students, because they all scored the same. So what does this mean? Well, it means that your rear values will always be low if your p-values are too high or too low. So if your questions are too easy or too hard, they won't differentiate between the students. Questions that have a more varied response, separating the proficient from the non-proficient, will generate a higher rear value. We're almost there. There's one final score you can look into, and that is the alpha coefficient or Cronbach's alpha. And Remindo will calculate this for you as well. Cronbach's alpha is the overall reliability of the test based on the P and rear values. In general, Anything under an 0.7 is poor, and at 0.9 or higher, you have an excellent score on the Cronbox Alpha. But check out the BKE Brightspace or theme testing for more details on all of these scores. And there you are. You've now taken on the basics of psychometric analysis, and you're ready to dive into Remindo to find out about the reliability of your test. Let's recap. P-value is the percentage of students who answered the question correctly, so that's the difficulty index. Rear value is whether the question differentiates between proficient and non-proficient students, the discriminatory index. And don't forget, you need a large population and a large number of questions for a good analysis. Do you have an open question test that was administered on paper? Well, in that case, check out the Excel file that you can find on theme testing and also on the BKE Brightspace environment. In this overview, you fill out the scores and the P, the rear, and the Chromebox Alpha are calculated for you. All the best on your future analyses. Thanks for watching.